Welcome back to Tula. Today we are discussing and introducing another main construct in institutional theory, the institutional logics. In part one, we learned that firms become the same over time. But when all firms become the same, why do we have still different organizational responses? Using our example from part one, if all firms issue now sustainability reports, why are these reports different? This is what isomorphism cannot explain. Institutional logics, however, can help us to describe the variations and different responses in organizations. Let me give you an example. In very simple terms, institution logics represent the values and beliefs in a company. When we use our example from part one, sustainability represents a value in a company and we can see a shift to a more sustainable behavior in society. So actors in the field, which include the society, but also customers, NGOs and all other organizations, put external pressures on companies. As a consequence, firms realize they need to show sustainable behavior. For firms, that means that they have to somehow integrate sustainability values in their company's meaning system. So they develop and adopt a sustainability logic. So in this particular company, sustainability is now part of the organization. However, firms have to deal also with other logics. For instance, all companies are driven by the logic of the market. A market logic represents a profit maximization approach and is considered a core logic, simply because the main goal of every business is to make money. But when you look inside a company, you will realize that profit maximization and expenses for sustainability measures, that's not really compatible. And this is what we call competing logics, because there's always a fight between stakeholders or actors inside and outside the company, which logic is more important, the sustainability logic or the market logic. And these fights for a dominant logic, or in our case, how to integrate and reflect sustainability values within the company, that is the underlying rationale that drives the differences in organizational responses. Because it depends on how powerful the various stakeholders are. And these powers are different in every company. While in one company, for example, management is very proactive to implement sustainability practices, another company might be restrictive and only does the minimum. But as mentioned before, companies do not only have to deal with the sustainability or the market logic, but with many others. And with many stakeholders with different interests, the fight for different logics and influences. However, the logic perspectives has also some limitations. Also, the institutional logic perspective can help us to explain the differences in, for example, a sustainability report. It is limited to describe or classify the influences of these stakeholders or actors, which is another limitation of institutional theory. You have to use other theories for that. For instance, you could integrate stakeholder theory into institutional theory to categorize the salience of stakeholders. Or you can use stakeholder agency theory to describe the information asymmetry and the so-called power differentials between stakeholders and management. But that is a topic for another mini lecture.